Hey and welcome to a quick guide on some useful add-ons for Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 is not like your World of Warcrafts and games like that where you've got a whole overlay of add-ons changing absolutely everything about the game. Guild Wars 2 has a combat analyzer that has actually been allowed by Anet from a thread in 2017 and that is the one that we pretty much use. There are one or two other things that you can obviously add on to it to get a little bit more information. The general consensus in the community is just don't be a douche with it. If you can see that people have failed mechanics or that their DPS isn't great, don't rub it in their face, just be nice about it. And it depends what your LFG or your Discord posts look like. If you clearly stated that you need an experience group, no failing more than one or two mechanics and people do, then obviously, you know, they've signed up for that sort of a thing. But if you are just in a semi-experience group, please don't be a douche about, you know, people's DPS and their mechanics. Now, obviously, I'll put a link in the descriptions below for all the different websites, but you want to basically search ArcDPS on Google and go to the DelcaTerConnector.com ArcDPS. What you'll do is you'll scroll down to the bottom of the page and there will be download here. What you want to do is download this specific file, the .dll file. Well, then you will copy and paste it inside of the Guild Wars 2 folder in your program files. You'll just have to obviously navigate your way there and you will drop it here right next to your launching icon. You will throw anything else that you want. And I'll obviously put links in the description for the boon table as well as the mechanics log. Please remember, don't be a knob. And that will be in here. That means that when you launch it, all of these will be activated and you can use them all. Then once your ArcDPS is in the folder, you can log into the game. You might be greeted with a couple of options off of the bat. I generally would just select the DPS meter for now. Then enter the game and grab your DPS meter. What you want to do is set it up in the style that you want. Most of the time as you log on, it's generally fine. But one thing you should do is right click on it go down to display and go to stat format this is quite important because most raiders don't care about cleave like cleave doesn't matter because some classes are going to melt a boss and some are just going to do massive aoe dps you want to keep an eye on it and generally it will order via cleave so it's always important to notice that just because you were top of the dps meter doesn't mean you were doing the highest dps it's very hard to understand that sometimes but for newer players they kind of look at the who or, or you know I DPS you and you're like, bro, you did like 70% of what I did on boss, you know, it's, uh, it is one of those things. Some people care, some people don't, but most raiders care about target damage, what you did to the boss. So that's why in my case, at five is my target per second. So that is my DPS on boss per second. So the way I have it set up is I have my at five first. Then I have space and in bracket, I put my at two because that is my cleave DPS. It is still good to have it on your DPS meter. And I'll tell you a little cheeky reason why is sometimes in certain fights like Slothers are, your cleave will tell you who in the beginning melted the slab. So basically who killed your friend. Uh, and also, you know, in fights like Matthias, because there's no other ads around, you can see who has the highest cleave. And that was the person who by mistake killed their mates instead of CC in them. So, you know, funny, but it, it's still good to know those things because, it, you know, for raiding experience. Then I basically put space and I put my total target damage. Now what you can do is you can push Alt Shift T and this will open up your entire options for Arc DPS. So all of your windows, all of your boon tables, everything you have access to here. This is quite important. I generally add a second DPS meter and I play around with it. So with this window, what I like to do is I like to go to advanced stats and change it from DPS to break bar. This will become my break bar meter. And that's how I can tell who's doing what CC. Because in certain fights, you're like, wh wh why is this Scourge doing like the like no CC? He's supposed to be top of the bar, you know? And, and I know it sounds bad, but because I do a lot of training groups, it's very important for me to keep an eye on who's doing what so that I can say to you, hey, listen, if you take this and this and you use it like this and this, your CC will pop off, you know? And that sort of a thing. So generally you use it to try and see especially if cc is an issue who's not bringing the cc or you teach them and you can also use these windows you can just add extra ones up top here you can select as many as you want you can right click and you can go to advanced stats and you can track almost everything cleansers boon strips everything so even if you're using this 
for like world versus world, you could still track as much as possible if you're in this fight, certain fight, like your Solus Horror or your Slothazar or something, and you want to see who's doing all the cleansers, who's ripping off boons, everything. You can track and see who's doing what. Now, Arc DPS does come standard with its own boon table, but this thing is almost impossible to decipher. So I never like to use that. Instead, I use the boon table add-on. This is the easiest way. This still basically says from inside of combat, how much percentage are they keeping up? You know, how many stacks of might, how often, blah, blah, blah. And with this table, you can add things. You can say to yourself, okay, brilliant. Uh, how much vigor are we keeping up? You know, maybe you've got mirages all over the place or, you know, you've got, you know, vindicators and they want to see how much swiftness, how much vigor. You can track whatever you want. You can track different abilities from different classes and you can just leave it on. Obviously, this is from entering combat to exiting combat. So it doesn't tell you a full story. I mean, boon givers are not going to be smashing you with boons when you're doing like Zera and you're like pushing the orbs through the portals and things like that. So it kind of is a bit like, it gives you an idea of who's doing what. But you need to look at the raid log to get the actual idea of who's done what in what phase. And again, generally with this, you can drag them around. So if you want quickness as your, obviously your main stat that you're looking at, you can drag it to the front. Generally what I'll do is I'll put quickness, lacrity and might, and I'll kind of shift it off to the side like this. So I can basically have a quick glance. If I want to have a look at something else like prot up time, because maybe we were dying a lot, I'll pull it out and have a look. But those are the three that I kind of most want to keep my eyes on because that's where all the DPS is at, really. And then one of the most important ones actually is metrics. I love this little thing because it's basically telling me whether I'm like DC'd or not. It basically has your frames per second, your ping and your response to the server. So if I see that flash in red a lot, then I know I'm desyncing pretty hard. And also, you know, generally my ping will go between like 170 to like 300, depending on whether I'm streaming or not, which is pretty sad. But yeah, this basically will just give you a bit of information. Like maybe you're standing there and you're like, why are my skills like not going off when I'm pushing them? And you look down and you're like, ah, I got like a thousand ping. Okay, well, that explains it. So yeah, having metrics up, I usually also just throw it next to my, uh, you know, like my toolbars and such. And then at least you've got it, you can see when things are happening. And obviously there's a lot of other things you can play around. But one thing we would need to look at is up at the top here, just right of interface login. What we need to do to save logs is click here, save after boss encounter. Obviously, if you want to do it for world versus world, there's a couple of other options of when to basically have the breaks in the save so that you can go and find it. Generally, you want to save after the boss encounter and use NPC name for the save path. That means that like when you finish doing Solus Horror, the file will be Solus Horror or Desmin, I can't remember. And basically, that's how you can find your logs and it will keep a log of every single time you fought that specific boss so you'll see the date and the amount of attempts so even if it's a fail we'll still save it after every single time you fought that specific boss so it's quite cool these are pretty massive though like in terms of you know space they, they're quite big files so you know keep an eye on them maybe chuck them on a hard drive after a while and uh yeah basically after that we go and throw it on a website so I haven't actually saved a raid log for quite a while, so I don't actually have one to show you as an example, but basically you just take it out of a folder, throw it right here, and it will take a bit of time. It will process the log and the log will be completed. Then afterwards, your log will look something like this. Now reading a log might seem quite confusing in the beginning, but the main thing you want to look at is total target damage, power plus condition damage. So this will tell you who basically did the most DPS to the boss. Obviously you can look at all damage, but this takes into account cleave. So this is kind of something we generally ignore. If you ever went to sword bite, you can see, okay, who did the most cleave damage? Okay, in this case, it was the Willbender, but most target damage was the Scourge. This will also show us who did the most CC. So we can sort via break bar. And this is also quite important to know that in this case, the Spectre absolutely dominated the CC bar and did a fair amount of DPS. So I think this player popped off quite nicely. Then we can go to the buffs log. What this will do is this will show us boon up time. And this is quite important. So we can see how much boon up time there was in terms of especially quickness, alacrity, and how many stacks of might they managed to generate. Now, this is where phases become important. Up top here, we have full fight, pre break bar one, break bar two, and three and final. So we can click and we can see on that specific phase how much boon generation there was. 
In some fights where there are down phases, like in between on, say, a fight like Gorsival, you can see on the DPS phases how much they did because perhaps you're doing split strat or you're sending, you know, the Druid to go and deal with the Az and basically immobilize them. You know, obviously his might and alacrity uptime is going to drop substantially. So this also tells you as an individual, perhaps maybe you did brilliantly on some of the phases and then you went down state and you couldn't generate like celestial avatar and that's why you struggled overall. So this tells you per phase who's doing what. You can also do this for DPS. You can see who basically DPS the best in certain phases. Perhaps you popped off in some phases or then perhaps you went down state and you needed to or you needed to go deal with a mechanic. This will tell you basically who did what in which phases. Now there are plenty of things to have a look at here, but also a notable one is the mechanics. You can see how many players got hit by different mechanics, like in this case, Donut the in or the out, i.e. the inner ring or the outer ring. How many times people got hit by the Golem AoE, how many spin attacks she got off on you, things like that. That will basically tell you who has done what mechanics. And you can even watch this entire fight again. If you go to combat replay, you can go here and push play and watch the entire fight. How the combat moved, who was standing where, who got hit by which things, who went down state where. And this is quite a good indication of, you know, how to play a fight really well. Especially if you're a newer player and you want to see how to position yourself in certain fights or what tactics people took. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail and frighten your brains, but there is a website called Wingman. Very good. Have a look at it if you want to. It basically feeds all the logs into this database that tells you what classes are doing what. So it sets targets for you. You can see what people in those specific classes are doing DPS wise, support wise. Really good to have a look. And you can also see who's got the top bench on which bosses. Really cool stuff. Another thing I wanted to show you is basically the the one that most people warn you about to not get too toxic and that is the mechanics log having this will tell you who's failed what mechanics if you use this please just be kind you know send the person a tell say hey listen you know you failed this or whatever i use it quite often in training groups and things like that to see who's failing certain mechanics that can maybe wipe the raid just say to them you know and please just be respectful the whole game and the whole raiding scene is actually quite respectful so Try keep that on, you know, it's not cool having a mechanic log and, you know, going at, oh, this guy failed the mechanic, oh, let's kick him or whatever. You know, obviously, if you've signed up for a clear group and your expectation is no mechanics failed, then obviously the person has that expectation. But, you know, if it's an LFG, just, you know, a bit of grace on the chap and whatever. And that's it. I really hope that you've enjoyed the guide. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, thank you anyway for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.